Need help with choosing an underlay? And which one? Then stay tuned. Hi everyone, Sonika here from Mali Roofing. Before we get to today's video, just special thanks to Prava, the Professional Roof Repair and Waterproofing Association of South Africa, where this video will be shot. If you'd like to find out more about Prava and all the good work they do to uplift the skills of people in our industry, click on the link in the description below. Roofing underlays are varied, and depending on the climatic factors and the requirement of the project, you will either use, in most cases, a roofing undertile membrane, like this one, or a radiant barrier. This one is okay when you just want to use a barrier of some sort in your roof as a dust barrier, or a safety net should there be any faults with your roof and you've got any leaks so that you don't end up with water in your roof. But for South Africa, I would say the best choice to have in your roof is a radiant barrier. The reason I say that is a radiant barrier basically stops heat transfer happening in the first place. So the sun will break down on your roof and if you do not have this, it will enter through your loft into your home and during the summer months, it will become quite hot. Whereas if you have a radiant barrier, it can block up up to about 98% of the sun's rays. So this is the perfect one to use in the South African climate. But what do you do in the winter? So for that, we have got the Mali poly wool. This is basically a ceiling insulation. You lay it out over your ceiling boards and this prevents heat losses during the winter. So at Mali, we basically combine this product and this product to create an insulation system that will ensure that your house remains lovely and cool during the summer and warm and toasty during the winter. Because a radiant barrier prevents heat transfer in the first place, it has also become a main component to achieve the minimum deemed to satisfy R values in accordance with SANS 10400 XA. To learn more about R values, click on the link in the description below. The installation of an undertile membrane and radiant barrier is the same, though for this video we've chosen a radiant barrier. If your roof has valleys like this one, first install strips of underlay that is at least 600mm wide and the required length of the valley, plus 150mm for the overlap over the ridge. This will ensure that you have an adequate layer of waterproofing underneath the underlay of the main roof. Starting on the left or the right, roll out the radiant barrier over eaves. If your roof has a hip junction, ensure that you extend the radiant barrier over both sides of where the hip joins by at least 150 millimeters. As you roll the radiant barrier out, ensure that you do not pull it too tight. You need a bit of slack to ensure free flow of water down the roof and out. The slack will also create the air gap that is required to ensure that your radiant barrier is effective at blocking radiation. Once you have achieved the desired tautness, secure the end with a 25mm corrosion resistant cloud nail as well as at every second rafter. You do not need to nail any more as the battens will hold the barrier in place. When nailing, take care not to drive the hammer too hard and damaging the structure underneath. Care must also be taken with the radiant barrier itself as to not cause any unnecessary puncture holes and tears. For the majority of the roof layout, the underlay is installed over the rafters and underneath the battens. But different applications apply for closed eaves to that of open eaves. Okay, so you will note that with the radiant barrier we stopped it here and the reason for that is we are going to pretend that this is an open eave. So usually when you have an open eave, the radiant barrier basically needs to stop at your plaster batten. And to ensure that you leave enough space for plaster work and so that you don't plaster this in, we basically need to ensure that there's about 20 millimeters that is extending past the um, plaster batten so that it can drip freely out from the roof. 
The same principle applies at gable ends. For open gables, ensure at least a 20mm extension over the plaster batten at gable ends. So you will notice that we've done the radiant barrier on this side a little bit different than the other side. The reason for that is we are going to pretend that this side is going to be a closed E. A closed E is basically where you've got a soffit, everything is closed up. So in practice what's going to happen is your radiant barrier, you're also not going to nail it, you're going to have your tilting batten here. So all the other battens are going to lie on top of your radiant barrier except your tilting batten. So basically the tilting batten is going to sit here and then this needs to be pulled taut and then it drips over into the gutter. Once you have secured the first eaves cores of underlay, start this process again with the next row above, ensuring that you have 150 mm overlap over the bottom of the radiant barrier. It is a good practice to tape any overlaps with either a good quality double-sided tape or foil tape. The latter is used more in commercial roofs where the foil is exposed on the inside of the building. Taping just leaves everything looking neater. The double-sided tape is sufficient to use on residential homes where the loft is closed. For vertical laps, ensure that you join over a rafter, still allowing for 150mm overlap that is centered over the rafter. When it comes to hips, the underlay may be brought up to the hip rafter or overlapped on both sides by at least 150 millimeters. When you have reached the ridge, ensure that the underlay overlaps on both sides by 150 millimeters. Okay, you'll notice that we haven't stuck this down yet and the reason for that is that we still need to adjust it a little bit when we fix the valley tray at the bottom. That concludes today's video on radiant barriers. Ensure that you subscribe and follow us and keep an eye out for our next video to be released in a week's time. See you soon!